So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Center of Korean Studies seminar. And we are very happy to have with us Su Jin Hyun, who is a PhD student from Songyongwan University, She's writing a dissertation at the Department of History. And she has her previous degrees, both the BA and the MA degree from Songyongwan University as well. Uh, so she's a specialist on the Korea period, and she's especially working on uh, Confucian political thought uh, in the Korea period, uh, a topic on which she has written several uh, papers. Uh, she is also now a visiting scholar with us here at SOAS. So she's been with us since September last year, and we're happy to have her uh, with us, and she will be until the end of the summer. Uh, she, as you will see, she will talk about this topic uh, today as well, so Confucian thought in, in the Korea period. Uh, she will talk for about 45 to 50 minutes, after which we will have a question and, and, and a Q&A period. Uh, if you have any question coming to mind as you're listening, you can put it in the Q&A box. So please don't put questions in the chat box, rather in the Q&A box. Uh, and then afterwards, of course, you can you still put the questions in the Q&A box, or if you want, you can raise your hand and, and give your question straight away. Uh, so, let's get started. So, Su Jinhan, please. I'm looking forward to your talk. Oh, thank you, uh, Dr. Kirsten. Uh, so, good afternoon. Uh, I'm the speaker of uh, this lecture, uh, Hyun Su Jin. Uh, at first, thank you so much for attending today's lecture. So, uh, actually, I didn't expect that such many people uh, will uh, would come to this lecture. So. I'm really happy about that. And I also mindfully appreciate the Center of Korean Studies for giving me this uh, precious opportunity. Uh, so actually this talk is uh, ultimately based on my published works that will form my uh, PhD dissertation. So uh, I wanna, <clears throat> I wanna um, give you some like uh, what uh, the Con uh, Confucian thought of uh, Goda Dynasty is, and then I want to, uh, I'll discuss about them. So at first, uh, let me share my PPT. Uh, can you uh, see my PPT slice? <coughs> okay. So, uh, uh, yes. Uh, so I'm going to divide this talk into six parts. So at first, I will uh, I will give uh, you uh, I will explain my research topic and questions briefly, and then uh, <coughs> uh, I will uh, I will explain uh, what uh, Confucian thoughts in Guru Dynasty was and how how they were utilized in the Guru Dynasty. Uh, so in the chrono chron chronological order from the chapter two to ch chapter five. So today I would like I, I would like to start our talk with these two images. Uh, firstly, I would, I would like to ask what your image of Goda Dynasty is. So uh, uh, it's almost forty <laughs> people there, so I can't ask you uh, personally. But uh, and I can I cannot cannot be sure of uh, my your answers. But I suppose that one of, of one of your answers uh, will uh, regard to the, those images, so Buddhism or Taoism. So as you know, uh, Goda people have believed in and in and practiced in Buddhism in their daily lives. So they also believed in Taoism and shamanism at the same time. Uh, as you know, Buddhism was the national religion of Korea with coexisting practices of Taoism and shamanism. So Goda dynasty was uh, was uh, understood usually understood as pluralistic society. So, however, uh, we need to focus more on Confucianism in the Goryeo dynasty. So, <clears throat> uh, generally, uh, we regard that Joseon is a Confucian Confucian. Uh, Joseon is like Confucian society, and the Korea uh, was, uh, was the Buddhist society. So uh, generally, uh, we interpreted the, the historical transition from Korea to Joseon uh, as a Buddhist society to the, uh, the transition of uh, from the Buddhist society to the uh, 
uh, Confucian uh, society. Uh, however, uh, kings and courtiers of Goryeo uh, tried to rule their country based on the Confucian thought. Uh, so it brings us to today's topic, the political and social role of Confucianism in Goryeo dynasty. So let me explain my research topic and questions briefly. Uh, so that is my question. And I will specially focus on introduction, understanding, and utilization of Confucian canons and their major annotations. Um, <clears throat> so unfortunately, uh, there have not been many studies about uh, Confucian thoughts in early Gura dynasty. It's because uh, previous, most of the previous studies uh, have focused on the new Confucianism in uh, Gura dynasty. Uh, which were introduced uh, to the late uh, Goda dynasty. Uh, so uh, the many studies, uh, many studies evaluated uh, Confucian thoughts of early Goda dynasty on the perspective of Neo-Confucianism. So we can observe some anachronistic uh, problems there. And the most important thing is that uh, actually the, the major studies about uh, Confucianism uh, uh, in Goryeo, Goryeo dynasty focused on Neo-Confucianism because, uh, <coughs> uh, as you know, Joseon was operated uh, based on the Neo-Confucianism. So the previous studies uh, wanted to figure out uh, how uh, Neo-Confucianism was adopted in Joseon dynasty. That's why they focused on the Neo-Confucianism as the origin of uh, the uh, Neo-Confucianism. Uh, however, uh, <coughs> So, so uh, they uh, they uh, they tried to explain uh, the the neo Confucianism in the late Goryeo dynasty uh, into two groups. So they uh, they created uh, they they uh, found the two, two Confucian groups in groups in the very late Goryeo dynasty. So one is so called progressive Confucian scholars, and the other one is uh, the so called conservative Confucian scholars. And then previous scholars uh, uh, interpreted that the young and progressive Confucian scholars adopted Neo-Confucianism. Otherwise, uh, the, uh, the conservative Confucian scholars uh, adopted, adopted the old Confucian thought. Uh, however, uh, based on the materials, I can observe uh, new, new things that uh, both of them they uh, read and they accepted and they utilized the old and the new Confucianism, Confucian thoughts at the same time. So uh, I, can, I can make a different uh, perspective uh, of that period uh, from the, the, the transition uh, from the Goryeo to Joseon dynasty. So uh, it brings us to uh, my research questions. So the, the most important question is that how did bureaucrats as intellectuals ruling Goryeo dynasty uh, shaped <coughs> their political thoughts to govern the country and what kinds of thoughts influenced them. And then I am also interested in the uh, relationship between the political thoughts and the actual political situation. It's because our previous studies are uh, uh, focused on the, the contents of ideology itself, uh, not uh, the related to the, uh, the the reality. So that's the point of uh, one of the point of my studies. And the third question is that how were those thoughts trans transformed according to the historical transition? So uh, let's move on to uh, let's move on to find the answer in the uh, in historical materials and history. So the first chapter, the title of the first chapter is Application of Five Classics and Establishment of Confucian Politics. Uh, and so I will, I will deal with the period from the 7th century to 10th century. So uh, let me explain about the establishment of Goda Dynasty first. So Goryeo dynasty was, I, I'm sure that uh, the many people already know about them. The Goryeo dynasty was the former dynasty of Joseon dynasty. So uh, it was established in the second half of the 10th century. Uh, and then at that time, there were five big countries and 10 small countries in China. So uh, there was uh, one historical figure, uh, he's very famous uh, in, actually in Korea. So his name is Wang Gong, who became the first king of uh, the Goryeo dynasty. 
So you can see the statue of the King Taejo, uh, King Wang Gon. Uh, Wang Gon is his uh, personal name, and Taejo is her king, the name of the king. Uh, so it was excavated uh, in North Korea, the, the statue. So we can see, uh, actually, I, I can't uh, see the statue uh, directly, but uh, some uh, I'm, uh, yeah, then I suggest that if you can go to North Korea, then you can see uh, at the National Museum. Uh, so Wang Gong uh, had defeated the late Sla and the late Baekje, called Hubekja in Korean. And then uh, he uh, wanted to found and wanted to find and gather the Confucian scholars. Uh, let me explain who these Confucian scholars were. So they are initially from the sixth grade uh, uh, called Yukdukpum uh, of Silla dynasty. So Dukpum uh, was the, this is kind of status system of Silla dynasty. So since then, uh, uh, but, but they, the Confucian scholars from sixth grade of Silla dynasty, they couldn't get the highest positions due to their limitation of status. So many of them uh, have immigrated to Tang, China. They have studied Confucian thought and tried to pass the civil examination of Tang dynasty. And actually they got official, the job as officer at, at there. And so, and they learned uh, the Confucian thought based on uh, the Ugyang Zhongyi. Uh, so it is, uh, the translation name, name is that the correct meaning of five classics. So I will explain it later, uh, uh, which is the brand new statecraft of Tang Dynasty. So King Taejo thought they could become good officers of Goda Dynasty since they had been well educated by new Confucian ideology as a statecraft at the time. So, and then they already learned how to, how to operate the bureaucratic system because they were served, served as officials in Tang Tang Dynasty, as I said. And they also knew how to write diplomatic documents, uh, not only for internal countries like the late Baekje in, in the Korean Peninsula, but also for the powerful external countries in uh, China. So the writing diplomatic documents is related to Confucian, uh, Confucian attainments at the time. So the scholars uh, welcome the new opportunities in the new government. Uh, like in Silla, they could take over the higher and highest position under uh, the King Taejo's, uh, King under the King Taejo Wang Gon. So they could realize their political thoughts in the new uh, government, uh, they full, full of hope. So I, uh, I wanna uh, I wanna introduce uh, one case of uh, those people, those uh, person. So uh, there is a historical figure called uh, uh, Che Eun. So he is from Hwangju, and it is located in Hwangju Gun of Hwangyebukdo in North Korea now. So and he studied hard when she was young. So he became well versed in uh, five classics uh, when he grew up. So he can, uh, he could write both royal documents and the diplomatic documents very well. So he was also good at administrative work. So King Taejo uh, appointed him as one of the new dynasty's officers by highly valuing his knowledge and talents. The Cheung uh, was, uh, as I said, not from the, uh, the capital city, uh, Gyeongju of Silla dynasty. He is from the very far, the region, she, he is from the region reason very far from the capital city of Silla dynasty. This means that he was not the leading noble of Silla. So Cheung could get a uh, opportunity to get a high officer uh, uh, like by uh, his, own, uh, his own ability and Confucian ability. So Confucian scholars who served Taejo and uh, read, uh, they, they uh, learned five classics based on the correct meaning of five classics, Ugyeongjongi in Korean. Uh, then what is the correct meaning of five uh, classics? So they are basically annotations of five classics. So five classics called Ugyeong in the Korean language are the primary Confucian classics established around the Western Han Dynasty. So five classics consist of classics of poetry called Sikyang and book of documents called Sangso and book of rites uh, Yegi and book of changes Zuyok and spring and autumn honors Chungchu. 
So those annotations were published according to uh, Emperor Taizong of Tang's order. Uh, and I'm sorry for my Chinese uh, uh, pronunciation, but please just me. So Emperor Taizong uh, has designed a vast imperial country. He also tried to renovate the institutions and flourish the culture. So compiling law and strengthen, strengthening the civil examination show his great interest to rule the big imperial country in a cultural way. That was why he ordered famous scholars to collect previous Confucian classics and put commentaries on them. As a result, his new son, the salt and favor of Tang Dynasty, uh, have completed this work and published the annotations. annotations. So that is the, the correct meaning of five classics. So it contains the annotations of Han and Tang's scholars. The emperor designated the classics as textbooks of the civil examinations and educated the books at the national school called Kuka. So after that, the books were distributed to other East Asian, East Asian countries and became a canon of Confucian thought. So actually it is not uh, directly regarded uh, to my uh, topics, but um, the correct meaning of five classics were distri distributed not only Korea, uh, 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 the, where the civil examination was exist, but also Japan. Uh, uh, so in Japan, there wasn't uh, the civil examination. So uh, at there, the Buddhist monk, monk uh, accepted the, 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 the introduced the correct meaning of five classics and they uh, read uh, and they cited uh, the these Confucian classics with a Buddhist uh, Buddhist uh, classics. So that's very interesting. So moving on now to examine the turning point of Confucian thought of Buddha Dynasty, King Guangzhong the Fourth. Uh, so please uh, uh, don't mind the names of the, the many names of the kings. So King Guangzhong the Fourth, one of the sons of Tezu, so mounted the throne and he was actually powerful a powerful king and he intended to stabilize the new country. So one of uh, his most powerful policies was the introduction of the civil examination, uh, Kwago, so called, it is called Kwago. So uh, the, the person who may, whose, whose name is Sangi uh, from the late Zhou dynasty of uh, China suggested this examination and Guangzhong accepted and uh, performed it. So since then, the civil examination had functioned as a primary system to choose bureaucrats until 1894. So the, the whole period from Korea to Joseon, almost like almost uh, 936 years. So we can shed light on the fact that the textbook of the civil examination were five classics. People who want to take the examination should read the correct meaning of five classics to understand five classics itself. Also, Huang Zhong showed his power to his courtiers while reading the Confucian political text called The Essentials About Politics from uh, Zheng Guan uh, reign. So uh, Zheng Guan is the era name of the Taizong of uh, Tang Dynasty. So as we can see, is the is as we can see from the name of the book, uh, it is the it uh, it is the the um, politics uh, politics about of uh, Taizong of Tang Dynasty. So this book consisted of dialogues between Emperor uh, Taizong and his courtiers. So in the in the in that book, they discussed how they can rule the country well. So the book says that uh, the monarch uh, must lead the politics based on his virtue, but should listen to courtiers' advice. Also, the monarch should choose courtiers who can suggest the right way of governance. The important thing is that uh, only monarch can decide political and social affairs who are open-minded to listening to his decision. So King Guangzhong, uh, the fourth of Korea, had been reading the book to show uh, his aspiration for Imperial Ta Taizong's rule. And then King Tongzhong the sixth was the person who had adopted the bureaucratic system of Tang all along the line and transferred, in, transferred it to the Korea dynasty. 
So he was actually very Confucian ruler and uh, tried to trying to adopt Confucian thought to rule the Gura, Gura society. So he ordered uh, the King Sengzong ordered uh, the fifth grace courtiers were, were evolved to offer the excellent and bad things about the current politics. So the famous Confucian uh, scholar uh, Che Seung Lo uh, suggested some advice and uh, Song Zhong uh, selected that advice. Uh, so according to the Che Seung Lo article for the king, we can get a lot of clues of Confucian thought and its role in Gura dynasty. So uh, let's dive into the uh, materials. So uh, it is the article from Che Seung Lo. So, in my humble opinion, Wu Jing, uh, who was an official historian of uh, Kai Yan period of Emperor Xuanzong of Tang Dynasty, wrote essentials about politics from Zhang Guan reign to recommend to Emperor Xuanzong to emulate Emperor Taizong's rule and cultivate it diligently. So in this phase, we can understand the Che Lo's direction to rule the country. He explained that the reason why uh, the essentials about politics from uh, <laughs> Zhang Guan reign uh, was written to emulate uh, the Emperor Taizong's governance. And then Che Seng Lo evaluated excellent and bad points about the politics of the previous uh, five kings of Korea. And uh, he, uh, in this uh, article, there is very important a sentence uh, to understand the Korea's political thought. So he said, uh, conducting uh, Buddhistic teaching is the basis of cultivating myself and conducting Confucian instruction is the source of governing the country. So this sentence shows the clear role of Confucian thought in the Gura dynasty to rule the country, that is the rule the country. So the thought was based on Confucian thought of Tang uh, Taizong. Uh, and, and then the, uh, his politics, that the emperor's politics uh, were uh, really were, um, were in the, 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 the text, the, the right, correct meaning of uh, the five classics, and then uh, the essentials about politics from Zhang Guan uh, reign. So let me move on to the next part of the presentation. So in this part, I will examine how Confucian thoughts were utilized in Buddha dynasty in earnest. Thus, people of Korea intended to utilize Confucian ideas in the political space. So then uh, we can ask how they were used and who used the thoughts and what situation were Confucian thoughts used in and what's the intellectual basis of Confucian thought at that time. So I will try to figure out the common uh, utilization of Confucian thought focusing on 10th to uh, 12th centuries when the typical util utilizations were formed. So we can observe five uh, the several types of uh, uh, several several ways to utilize Confucian classics, Confucian thought. So uh, the most important thing is the citation of five classics, and I will talk about later uh, soon. And then the other thing is that uh, they they uh, they used uh, the five classics uh, uh, when they want to establish institutions or policies. So they want to model after the in, uh, institu institutions or policies from the five classics. And uh, so they means that ruling class of Buddha, the kings and courtiers. And then sometimes king, uh, kings of Buddha displayed a folding sc screen with phrases from five classics uh, at the court. So this image is, is folding screen, but uh, not in Buddha dynasty because uh, it's gone. Uh, it, do it, did, it doesn't exist anymore. But uh, like this, uh, they, were, they were the phrases uh, of five classics and they displayed at the court to, show, to, to be seen uh, for everybody. And some kings uh, uh, bestowed five classics to courtiers. So I will, uh, I will uh, tell you the reason why uh, soon later. Uh, so the most frequent, frequent form of utilization of Confucian thoughts were citing specific phrases in Confucian classics by kings and courtiers. So when kings and courtiers uh, suggested political opinions, they cited particular words of Confucian classics and their annotations. Uh, especially they prefer uh, that 
if we prefer the phrases regarding the their own situations so they they chose a similar situation uh, for them uh, in the five classics <coughs> so uh, so uh, yeah let's dive into an example for our better understanding so King Munjong uh, is the king uh, in the 11th century. So he ordered, uh, according to the book of documents, that is the uh, that is the one of the five classics. Food only time matters. Uh, if if one person doesn't cultivate oneself, there must be people starving. Thus, uh, local officers should uh, pr uh, pri uh, uh, prior prioritize. Uh, farming the field and farming silk corn for plus. Half the heads of, of local officers in every province serve as Ponnungsa too. So in the material, uh, the king ordered the heads of uh, local officers in every pr province to serve as Ponnungsa. So Ponnungsa is the position of recommending agriculture. So he ordered it to accelerating farming and cultivation. So uh, uh, so uh, culti cultivation, they were the uh, most important for common people to live in the farming. So since the country could collect taxes based on the revenue from agriculture, so farming is very, very essential uh, to rule the country. So King Mundong uh, cited the phrase of the book of documents uh, and the phrase was understood according to the correct meaning of uh, the book of documents. So one of the meaning of five classics classics so and then citation of the classic could authorize the king's old order uh, we can figure out the reason uh, is because the content of the book of documents one of the five classics mainly dealt with how sainted uh, monarch monarch such as uh, uh, Yo Sun Wu of very ancient China China uh, operated their country. For example, uh, the book shows the virtue of monarchs and courtiers and how they use the bureaucratic system and how they appointed people to rule the country and then how they led the common people. So kings and courtiers uh, could get the previous uh, ideal, ideal politics and apply those ideal politics to Korea while citing the phrases of the book. Also, the king himself could compare himself to those Confucian saint king uh, by citing the, uh, citing the text. So it means he can get Confucian saint king's authority and legitimacy through this behavior, uh, this, this behavior, so citing classics. Uh, also, Gura's ruling class understood the classic based on the correct meaning of five classics, uh, which was published according to uh, Taizong of Tang's order. Thus, the citation means that the king of Korea would choose the Taizong's politics as well. Uh, actually, so not only uh, kings, but also courtiers often cited specific phrases of five classics when they meet. So uh, I will give um, uh, one example. Uh, so the eighth king, uh, Hyunjung of Goryeo Dynasty, uh, he discussed uh, courtiers to increase the number and the kinds of uh, the white ritual vessels for rural ancestor worship ceremony. However, the Ministry of Ritual criticized the king uh, because uh, and and they cited uh, phrases from the Book of Rites, the one of the uh, five classics. That is that. Don't extravagant in a rich ear and don't be frugal in a lean ear. So as a result, uh, the king accepted their advice and didn't increase the number and the uh, kinds of white uh, ritual, not, not right, sorry, ritual vessels. So as we can see, courtiers uh, also used Confucian te text to insist on their policy. So this behavior could authorize the to the courtiers who use the phrase. Uh, phrase. And I like to expand on our vital roles of Confucian thought, uh, other vital roles of Confucian thought. So kings and courtiers found their ideal uh, role as rulers in the five Confucian classics. So it is very important for them. 
So especially the book of documents, as I uh, said before, uh, could be a good model for them because uh, the book deals with the political decision-making and opinions of ideal kings and opinions of ideal kings and courtiers in ancient China. So they, they found their position in the classics and then try to realize their role in the reality where they lived. So let's examine the material. Um, material. So King Injong ordered uh, King uh, Taijia uh, of Xiang Dynasty relied on Chancellor Yi Yin and helped the country prosper. Uh, uh, and then skip one sentence. So every man of virtue must gain fame by fulfilling their duty, collaborate with and respect their colleagues and make their work flourish. Hereby, uh, if the man can contribute to heaven and heaven may help me prevent making mistakes, there will be endless beauty in the country. Then isn't it beautiful? So in this statement, King Injong presented, uh, uh, presented what the ideal monarch and courtiers should do, uh, talking about ancient, famous, ancient king and chancellor in China. So uh, he made an example of the ideal king and chancellor with King Taijia and Chancellor Yi in this uh, episode. So I will explain a little bit more about the Taijia's uh, story. So King Taijia uh, was the king of Xiang Dynasty in the in the ancient China, about BC 16th centuries ago. So and then he was a grandson of King Tang, uh, the the great king. So King King Tang uh, was the person who eliminated a tyrant of Jie uh, of the Xia Dynasty, and then established Xiang Dynasty. Uh, as a result. Tang, uh, the king Tang the Great, uh, had been regarded as the sainted king who saved the common people's life. So Yi Yin was the wise chancellor of him and helped him uh, establish the new country, Xiang Dynasty. So according to the stories of Book of Documents, Yi Yin uh, convinced Taijia to have the virtue of the king and rule the country, whole country well. But King Taijia uh, didn't listen to his advice. So Yi Yin expelled Taijia and had him returned when he reflected on himself. So that's the uh, original story of, uh, from the, the book of documents. So King Injong uh, 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 cited this story and uh, he, he, uh, he uh, ordered uh, the courtiers that to help me prevent making mistakes. So he, he, can, he could become uh, Taijia and then the courtiers can become the E in the very wise chancellor. So that's what I what uh, he wanted to say. Uh, so uh, he decided to listen to courtiers' advice and cultivate the king's virtue. Uh, um, uh, otherwise, he asked his courtiers to do their duty as officers, uh, like Eun did. So in a nutshell, uh, kings and courtiers in the Goda Dynasty should find and do their roles in Confucian classics. Um, <clears throat> classics. So, and as we saw a while ago, citation of classics could give them austerity by following the ancient Confucian saints' behavior. Uh, so, let's turn now to the contents of Confucian political thought. So, I think I suppose you already caught the uh, brief gist of the thought uh, because we examined. Uh, so uh, Confucian thought in the Goda dynasty was based on the correct meaning of five classics and essentials of our politics, which reflected the political thought of Emperor Taizong, uh, Taizong of uh, Tang dynasty. Uh, and we can figure out uh, through the classics that uh, Confucian thought at that time was uh, a state craft, uh, namely uh, it uh, says, how to rule the country and how, how the relationship between the kings and courtiers should be formed. So based on the materials uh, they thought, uh, I, can, I, I can figure out the kings and the courtiers virtue. So uh, the, the people of Korea, uh, actually the ruling class of Korea uh, thought that uh, the king should have virtue like this. 
so uh, benevolent attitude towards common people, fair bureaucratic appointment, listening to courtes petitions and advice, fair uh, law enforcement, diligence, and so on. And courtes virtue is like that, uh, virtues are like that, providing constructive criticism and support to the king. And then they, they should diligent as well. So, and then thus, the most important thing is that uh, they couldn't decide policies uh, themselves. Uh, so they means that courtiers. So, and then they must follow the king's final orders. So king always have the final say uh, in the classics, uh, in the, those classics. So duty of the, court, the duty of the courtiers is limited to supporting and advising the kings. So in a brief summary, kings and courtiers uh, who were the ruling class of Goda should make harmonious relationship while they firmly admitted the king's power, authority, and decision. So they wanted uh, a very strong and wise king like Taizong of uh, Tang Dynasty. And then the, the way uh, they utilize Confucian thought uh, become typical in Goda Dynasty, in the whole Goda Dynasty. So even in the military period, uh, this, ten this kind of tendency continued. So uh, the, there is a very famous uh, a military dictator, Che Chung Han. So we, uh, in, in Korea, in Korean history uh, biography, uh, they, they, uh, they called the period as the military period, uh, uh, the, when the military dictators um, uh, governed the country. So although they, are, they, are, they were military dictators, uh, they professed to be a Confucian chancellor like Yi in, uh, as we saw before, right before. So it's very different from our prejudices. Uh, so we, we, so we, uh, we general, generally, we suppose that, uh, actually the previous uh, studies uh, suppose that the military dictators are very ignorant and they didn't know how to rule the country based on the Confucian thought. But uh, however, uh, he, the Che Chung Han, the military dictator, uh, compared himself as a Confucian scholar and an officer at the same time. So, and then his descendants uh, who seized the power uh, following by him also, also, uh, also cite, cited Confucian classics and best told those classics and they they tried to authorize their their power uh, by uh, using those Confucian classics. So let's move on to the next chapter, the coexistence of old and new Confucian thought. So Confucian thoughts uh, are political and social uh, role changed from the Mongol domination in the late, late uh, 13th century. So the, Mo the Mongol Empire invaded uh, not only China and Europe, but also Korea uh, as well. So uh, after 30 years of the war, uh, Goda Dynasty surrendered the Mongol Empire uh, in 1259. 12, 12, uh, so since then, Goda had been dominated by the Mongol Empire, which became the uh, Yuan Dynasty until uh, thirty until thirteen uh, fifty six for almost uh, one hundred years. So during this period, Confucian thought couldn't work as a sacred like before, because at the time, uh, in the reality, uh, in the political reality, uh, Confucian virtues or moralities uh, couldn't. Uh, Mm, isn't wasn't important like before. So uh, it's because the Mongolians, uh, uh, Mongolians mm, has had a custom to uh, emphasize the, the a personal relationship, like the blood relationship or marriage relationship, uh, to uh, to interact uh, in the reality. So good us. Uh, so uh, so. Kings of Korea uh, should marry a princess of a uh, royal family of uh, Yan at the time, following the uh, Mongolian uh, customs. So uh, they, they could act as a servant of Yan dynasty and then as a son-in-law uh, of the Yan dynasty, not a Confucian, uh, Confucian sainted king like before. <coughs> so it happened. It uh, it happened the same for 
the courtiers. So the courtiers of Goda dynasty, uh, uh, if they wanted to, uh, mm, like, uh, they if they wanted to insist of insist uh, political opinions or policies or something, uh, they should find the connections between the personal connections uh, 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 to the Yan dynasty. So at that time, the people who had a relationship with Yan dynasty uh, had a, a great power. Uh, at the same time, interestingly, uh, it was the turning point of turning point of Confucianism as well. So Gura adopted uh, Neo-Confucianism from the Yan, uh, Yan dynasty uh, in the 14th century. So Neo-Confucianism was actually a new type of Confucian thought and metaphysical Confucian thought, em emphasizing the personal cultivation developed by uh, scholars of Southern Song dynasty, such as Zhu Xi, uh, Zhu, uh, Zhou Dun, uh, I know the, I, uh, I don't know the pronunciation, sorry. So Judoni in Korean and Zhang's brothers. Uh, so uh, Yan's rulers uh, chose Neo-Confucianism as the uh, political start to accept Han Chinese culture. So they designated the four books uh, compiled by Zhu Xi, the, the Neo-Confucianist, uh, as the textbook of the civil uh, examination. So the four books were uh, these four books were uh, like the representative Neo-Confucian canon text. Uh, so it consists of uh, analects and mentions and great learning and doctrine of the uh, Min. So uh, let's examine how the Neo-Confucianism was introduced to Goda dynasty at the time. So there was a King Chungsan, the 26, uh, and he is the, actually, he's very interesting person because he is the king of Korea, but uh, he is the grandson of the Kublai Khan or the first emperor of Yan dynasty. So he, he could gain a, a, a great power uh, both in the court, both court, both uh, court of the Yan and Korea dynasty. So King Chungsan established, uh, and King Chungsan had a lot of interested in culture of Yan dynasty. So he established a library called Bangondang. So it means that the 10,000 book, uh, the building of 10,000 books uh, in uh, Yanqing, so Beijing at the uh, Beijing nowadays. And he collected uh, and uh, he collected precious books and he invited uh, famous scholars of Korea and Yan dynasty, uh, the Yan dynasty. So the scholars from multiple regions gathered, studied, and discussed Neo-Confucianism. Uh, that is the brand new ideology at the time. So prominent, prominent scholars like uh, Korea, uh, prominent, prominent scholars uh, of Korea, like Lee Jae-hyun or Park Chung-jae, Park Chung uh, studied Neo-Confucianism there and transferred a uh, new ideology to Korea's intellectuals. Furthermore, the four books uh, annotations, uh, four, four books was uh, designated uh, the main uh, study text for the civil examination of Gura. Uh, uh, yeah, so from that time, the, the intellectuals of Gura dynasty, or intellectuals of Gura should learn four books uh, compiled by Zhu Xi to, uh, to, uh, to pass the civil examination and get the officer, get, uh, get the job of the officer. Uh, however, we should note that Confucianism had existed as an ideology among intellectuals, not actual sta statecraft like in the old days. <clears throat> so uh, after King Gongmin the 31st uh, ascended, ascended uh, the word changed because uh, when dynasty power was weakened and then and then King Gongmin himself couldn't have enough power to rule Korea as the king because he didn't have uh, enough basis of power uh, through the marriage relationship between Yan dynasty. So he uh, he married the one of the princess uh, called Loguk Dejang. Loguk Dejang. So she is the person who is in the picture, and but she is a collateral princess of Yan. So 
Kungmin couldn't have enough power through the marriage, and he should find another ways. So the way, uh, uh, the way, uh, to way of, uh, uh, the, uh, so, uh, so he chose the same way to of utilizing utilizing Confucian thought as they did in early Korea to show his authority as the king of Korea. So not as the servant of uh, Yan Dynasty. Uh, so uh, the specific ways are like, he ordered his courtiers to transcribe one chapter of the book of documents that's uh, showing the king's duty and the king's authority. And he also held royal lectures again and he read the, the five classics and then hung up the classics in the court to reveal his will about the Confucian rule. So that's the, uh, how uh, he wanted to show his power to the courtiers. <clears throat> as a result, old Confucian thoughts as statecraft and new Confucianism as ideology could ex coexist uh, during this period. So let's go to the last step chapter, so new ways to utilize Confucian thoughts. Uh, so uh, the King Gongmin uh, was assass assassinated and then uh, his son, King Wu, uh, got a throne. But uh, at that time, uh, when he got a throne, Wu, King Wu, uh, he was just nine years old. So he was, uh, so he couldn't rule the country like the previous kings. And besides, an um, influential courtier called Yi Inim seized the power at the time and commit, committed political and social economic co corruptions. And King Wu, uh, unfortunately, uh, he he was he he didn't have interest in ruling country. Instead, uh, he was mad at hunting, raping women, and then the banquet holding banquets like that. So some courtiers strongly warned the king and strongly recommended that he should concentrate on the ruling country. However, King Wu didn't listen to his courtiers' advice. Uh, instead, uh, he teased and punished them. Uh, so King Wu made a trap in the field and put his teacher uh, in, uh, on purpose. So that's what the king did. And uh, so at that time, Gura's uh, intellectuals continuously learned Neo-Confucian classics such as four books compiled by Zhu Si. So many young scholars studied and discussed uh, old and new annotations. So the, 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 Han, the, the Confucian text from the Han Bang dynasty and then Neo-Confucianism together. Uh, so the most uh, popular scholar at the time was Yi Sek. So he sought Neo-Confucian classics to uh, young people like Kwon Bin, Yun So Jung, and Jung Do Jeon, and so on. And some of them uh, was uh, some of them uh, supported Yi Song Ge, uh, uh, who became the first king of the Joseon Dynasty. So you can see him under this portrait. So Yi Song Ge. Uh, to establish a new new country, Joseon. So finally, King uh, Wu was expelled in 1388, and then they uh, uh, be right before that, right before uh, that time, uh, uh, King Wu uh, and his close courtiers tried to attack the Chinese Ming Dynasty, and ordered uh, it to Gen General Yi Songge. So. Isonge is the, the name of the the, uh, the Isonge is the person who became the first king, and then but he diso disobeyed the, the order and returned his army at Wihado. So you can see the map. So it's very close to China. So uh, at there he returned to his army. So it's like, uh, yeah. So it's like a rebellion. It's a coup. So and. Uh, Isonge had a tactician group consisting of young scholars uh, who studied Neo-Confucianism. So the young scholars couldn't find hope in the current political situation and found another choice to rescue their country. So they enthroned King Chang, uh, the son of King Wu, and then uh, right after the army's retreat. And Isonge's group wanted to find tactics to criticize their political enemies now. 
So mainly they wanted to throw out people like Yusek, so who were the are not in favor of Isangge. And they wanted to kick out King Tang again. So they found tactics to perform their political ambition in male Confucianism. That's what they chose. So uh, Yun Sojong and Zhou Jun uh, were the main people who established this tactic. So they they decided to use uh, they decided to Confucian use Confucian legitimacy to eliminate their enemies and uh, furthermore expel the king. So they forged a diplomatic document from the first emperor of Ming Dynasty and put a phrase of spring and awesome honors. So uh, I I hope that you can remember that that is the, also the one of the five classics. So we can see the phrase of uh, the, uh, the spring and often honors uh, uh, what they uh, chose in the document like below. Uh, so the king's descendant was gone after King Dongmin's mother. Although King Wen Chang forged the surname of Wang and became kings, it's not a good custom to be protected passed down. In the old days, a person who was called enemy murdered his monarch, monarch because the world was full of king's uh, villain, villainy. Among people who murdered the king, there were people who ruled the country benevolently. Thereby, they turned heaven's will and made public content, although they were Nanjin Jokja. However, Guru has not been peaceful until now because court is involved in discreet uh, machinations uh, uh, and deceived people again. So uh, they uh, in this uh, material, uh, we can see that Isangas group uh, forged this document in two ways. So one is to claim uh, that King Wu and Tang, uh, that King Wu and Tang were not the descendant of King Gongmin. So King Wu was actually suspected to be the son of a monk of power, Xin Dong. Uh, uh, actually, it's a very inter interesting school, uh, story because uh, King Gongmin was not like uh, not uh, uh, not uh, King Gongmin was uh, actually a gay, so he 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 couldn't uh, he 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 didn't want to uh, make a relationship with women, so that's the uh, that's the uh, why the rumor the kind of rumor was uh, uh, revealed at the time, and then the the, the other way is uh, to criticize traitors as uh, the phrase of Nanjin Dokta. So we should focus on this word, Nanjin Tokta. So Nanjin is basically, uh, uh, Nanjin means that the, uh, the uh, means uh, that uh, the courtiers who killed the, uh, their king. And Tokta means that uh, the person who killed their parents. So uh, this uh, phrase, this word, Nanjin Tokta, was actually a phrase that comes from the commentary on Mencius uh, compiled by Juicy, comp compiled and annotated by Juicy. And initially, the spring and awesome honors, uh, that is the, actually the classic of history and model of all the history books in East Asia, was, uh, it, and it, is, it was regarded as a Confucius work. And Men uh, Mencius uh, analyzed the meaning of writing, uh, meaning of the writing this book of uh, Confucius, uh, that uh, Confucius wrote this book to criticize uh, and punish traitors by recording their name forever, recording their name in the history forever. So that's the Mencius interpretation towards the Spring and Autumn Honors. And to see, uh, reinterpreted this phrase again, his annotation. So that is that the reason of Confucius writing uh, that book, The Spring and Awesome Honors, was to punish Nanjin Jokja. So uh, the word of Nanjin Jokja, uh, of the document, uh, as we see, the document was originated from the Jewish interpretations of Mengjia's revelation for Confucius. So young Confucians of uh, East group read and adopted Mengjia's uh, commentary uh, <clears throat> as their intellectual basis and utilize the phrase to attack their enemy. So ideolo ideological foundation of this phrase was based on Confucian classic written and stepped down through uh, Confucius, Mencius, and uh, Juicy's interpretation. 
So referring this phrase could justify to criticize the enemy who didn't fit the term. As a result of the document, King Tang was expelled. And furthermore, King Wu and Tang was uh, executed. Uh, they died, they, are they, were they died. And then Isaac, the head of the opposite group, was kicked out from the court. So every time they were expelled or executed, uh, we can find uh, the phrase of Nanjing Zhokja as the justification of East group. So finally, East group uh, seized the power and became leader to establish the Joseon dynasty. So this way of utilizing Confucian uh, thought to attack the enemy uh, would be the significant way to attack political enemies in the court, uh, even in the uh, Joseon dynasty. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, what I uh, what I prepared of uh, what I prepared for this uh, presentation. So I will give uh, you a brief uh, conclusion. Conclusion. So uh, when we think about the uh, Confucianism, uh, uh, in actually we generally we think about the Joseon dynasty and the Neo Confucianism, then. The new con the, the Confucian cultures and politics of just Joseon Dynasty, uh, where where the Confucian cultures of politics uh, and politics of Joseon Dynasty came from came from, uh, is it originated from Joseon itself or not? So actually, it it didn't, as we see. So uh, from the uh, Goryeo Dynasty, Confucianism Confucianism Confucian thought was used in the reality all the time. But the contents and the basis of the Confucianism was different depending on the period and the text. So uh, at the time when Goryeo was established, there wasn't there uh, the Neo Confucianism didn't exist. Uh, instead, uh, there was a Confucian thought based on the Han and Tang's um, uh, Tang's politics, especially the Taizong's uh, politics. So uh, that is. Uh, that kind of thinking was in the, the, the text uh, called uh, the correct meaning of five classics and the, uh, the essentials about politics uh, from Jonggan period of Jonggan period. Uh, so after uh, Wien's domination, yes, domination, uh, Confucianist Confucianism as a statecraft uh, weak, uh, was weakened. But uh, the, uh, the neo Confucianism as an ideology introduced to Guru Dynasty. And then intellectuals of Goryeo, uh, the late Goryeo, uh, learned both of the uh, Confucian thought. Uh, however, uh, in the very late Goryeo dynasty, the, new, the young Confucian scholars who studied Neo-Confucianism, they, uh, they chose some uh, phrase and they utilized their phrase to attack their enemy. So, uh, so the way to utilize the Confucianism uh, was, trend, uh, was change it uh, from the, the early Goryeo dynasty, and this type of uh, the way the the way to utilize uh, uh, utilize to Confucian thought uh, would continue to Joseon dynasty. Oh, yeah, so that's uh, uh, that's my uh, conclusion, and uh, uh, thank you again uh, to come and listen to my uh, presentation. So please uh, feel free to ask whatever you are curious about. Thank you very much. Thank you, <clears throat> Sujin. It's a very interesting talk. And as you, you, you rightly say, on a, a topic that has not been covered so much. Uh, so I have learned a lot. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure there will be questions. Uh, actually, in the beginning, uh, Andrea had a question for asking about the uh, the difference between neo-confucianism and confucianism you, you did talk about that later on uh, the kind of metaphysics uh, with neo-confucianism etc but i thought maybe we could still delve on on that kind of difference i um, mean because you you said that you think that one problem when studying early core confucianism is that scholars do that with a neo-confucian mindset so, so that they don't separate between the two of them. So more in kind of concrete terms, in, in terms of uh, political thought, or actually in terms of, of actual policies, well, what would be the difference then between that kind of pre-New Confucian, Confucianism of early Korea and 
uh, later period and end into the Koryo period, uh, sorry, into the Bachosan period. Oh, okay. Thank you for a very interesting uh, question. Uh, actually, that's the uh, main point of my research, my future research uh, project. So now I don't have like the firm conclusion, but I can give you a brief uh, idea, the rough, yep. rough idea uh, uh, of mine. So I think the they have a common uh, basis uh, as a uh, Confucianism itself. That is the like the, the characteristic of uh, as a statecraft. So the pre neo Confucianism and neo Confucianism, both of them, uh, they they provide some uh, provide. Uh, some uh, ideas about how to rule the country. So that's the that's very important. But uh, uh, in Han uh, and Dan's Confucianism, so pre-Confucianism, uh, they actually focused on, actually they, they focused on the, to interpret the, the old classics uh, uh, characters itself. So they, they tried to figure out the meaning of the uh, meaning of the the characters itself and then phrases itself. So they are obsessed with that uh, to to interpret uh, the characters, uh, and and then uh, and uh, and otherwise uh, the neo Confucianism has like the metaphysical philosophical of philosophical characteristic and they focus on the personal virtue of, uh, of each each uh, literatist so uh, uh, the neo, in the in neo confucian thoughts uh, the every literati should have a uh, confucian virtue and they have to uh, like they they uh, they have this virtue in their deep in mind, uh, so that's the very distinctive uh, characteristic of neo Confucianism. So in my thinking, in early Guru Dynasty, uh, there there wasn't uh, the concept uh, about the like the the each person's the morality and uh, virtue. So at that time. The kind of uh, the the utilization to attack the enemy didn't exist. That's why I I think about that because uh, in the neo Confucian thought, uh, the each person ha uh, must have a uh, Confucian virtue. So if they don't have the virtue, then they can be attacked by the the logics of the neo Confucian thought. But but before that, uh, they didn't emphasize the the personal virtue and they just they just uh they just provide the how to rule the country and what the kings and courtiers behave not the their that not that they uh not they not they didn't focus on their uh, deep mind itself so i think that's the that's the distinctive characteristic of uh those two kinds of uh the confusion uh thoughts yeah i and thank you <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure I can answer well, but yeah, uh, please. <laughs> no, no, so th that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, attacks on personal virtue would be very prominent when we get mm -hmm. into the Joseon dynasty. Mm, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, uh, please, questions in the Q and A box, uh, and if you want to give Sujin your 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 your, your question, like, please raise your hand. Uh, I have a question from uh, Chan He Lee, uh, and it's, it's related to uh, sources. So, so thank you for the great presentation. I would like to ask if there are any other evidences uh, for the political application of Confucianism beside Koryosa, and Koryosa then being the history of Korea that was compiled in the beginning of, of the Chosen dynasty. So, so what other kind of sources could we use to, to know more about how Confucianism would have been applied. Oh, yeah, thank you for uh, interesting uh, questions. So uh, actually, uh, Gura dynasty was like the, uh, the, the dynasty before Joseon dynasty. So there are not many materials. But <laughs> however, uh, uh, we have uh, Gura, like the 
official records from the government, the written by Gurasa, and uh, uh, there are some materials uh, like the literatures of the literatists and then the affectives. So uh, uh, on the and there are like uh, almost three hundred fifty uh, uh, affectives of literatists. Uh, and um, but not only the trustees, there are some women's epitaphs, and then there were some uh, generals' epitaphs, and but most of them are the, for the scholars. And there, uh, uh, I can observe a lots of uh, lots of like uh, Confucian uh, the utilization of Confucian thoughts at there. So uh, even for the women. Uh, there they cited a uh, woman's uh, even uh, in the woman's uh, woman's uh, epitaphs they cited some Confucian classics and they uh, they uh, they they uh, su suggested that how the person uh, acted like that acted like that so that's basically like so it's a good mother or a, a good mother or a good uh, wife or like that, but that uh, that's the the basis of the this uh, this uh, idea was from the, uh, the the classics Confucian classics. So so we can and then there are lots of uh, literatures of the collection of literature. So I think I can figure out the the utilization of Confucian uh, Confucianism and. Confucianism, not only in the history of Korea, but also other like personal records, I think so. So thank you very much for your question. Thank you. Um, actually, your, your answers linked very well with another question that we have from, from Viola. Uh, so thank you for your, your talk. It was extremely educational. Then have you by any chance come across evidence of women who uh -huh. were instructed in Confucian thought, so you you, you talked about how uh -huh. they, in the epitaph about women they referred to Confucianism, mm -hmm. but is there anything then mm -hmm. that shows that women might have been instructed in Confucian thought, or such a thing allowed? The question. Ah, uh, yeah, that's this is uh, actually that's what I'm interested in as well. Uh, so there uh, are obviously some evidence uh, that women can get uh, some education. And then actually, but but it's like the upper classes women, so not the common people. So the women's, uh, the according to based on the recent studies, uh, the women from the upper class they were educated, uh, educated by some basic Confucian texts and then Buddhist classics. So in the epitaphs or from the Guru Dynasty, there were some I think more than. Uh, like there are almost 20 epitaphs of women. I'm not sure, but there are. And uh, as I examine that uh, the record, I can realize that uh, uh, so they read Confucian classics. So like basic classics, like analects of Confucius or like uh, something. And then they often cite it at uh, the phrase of the analyst. So I think this kind of the cultural basement basis of uh, the woman in Guru Dynasty. And actually the more important thing is that for women, the Buddhism is the actually the much more important. So uh, there were some records about that uh, the, the, the lady uh, the lady keep reading the Buddhist classics uh, and keep, uh, memorizing the Buddhist classics until she died, so she could go to the the Buddhist heaven well, some something like the phrase. So, uh, so it was allowed, and they were educated, uh, in the Confucian thought. But, uh, what I want to uh, emphasize is that, uh, in Goryeo Dynasty, Confucian thought, uh, was basically functioned in the political. Uh, space, so it is not a lot for women, uh, and then so the the Confucian norm uh, was not the uh, let's say was not the uh, not regulate uh, the people of Goryeo Dynasty, not only men but also women. So so even even if uh, even though the men uh, like men uh, did. Uh, 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 against the Confucian Confucianism, 
uh, they can they they could go to the court and they could get they could get a good officer. So and then women for women are uh, uh, the for woman if a lady the woman uh, behave like the as the Confucian norm, uh, she will she would be uh, she would be uh, uh, praised. However, uh, uh, if she didn't, it doesn't matter at that time. So it's like the it's a norm, but not strict uh, norm as much as uh, Joseon did. I think so. So I hope that I can give you the uh, enough explanation uh, to Viola. Thank, thank you. And uh, we have two questions that both related to the relationship between uh, Confucianism and Buddhism. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll read the two questions and then maybe you can answer them together. So the first one is from Wing Shan Chan. So thank you very much. It is an inspiring presentation. So when looking at the annals of the Chosun dynasty, uh, the Confucian oriented courtiers argued that activities or rites related to Buddhism resulted in negative political and social impacts on the society. Therefore, they imposed reform policies such as suppression of Buddhism or banning people from visiting temples in the Chosun dynasty. So then could you please tell us a little bit more about the relationship between Confucianism and Buddhism during the Korea dynasty? So how did they influence each other? Were similar disputes between the two of them? Mm -hmm. So that's the first question. And the second is from Barbara Huskova. So thank you for your presentation. Uh, do you think that antagonism towards Buddhism at the end of Korea dynasty and during Chosen dynasty is connected to Neo-Confucianism? Uh, it seems during Korea, those two were in some sort of symbiosis, or is the antagonism derived from political situation rather than ideological? Uh, oh yeah, thank you for uh, the two questions. And, uh, uh, and... I think the relationship between uh, the Confucianism and Buddhism it, uh, can be the, the most important uh, characteristics of uh, Buddha's, uh, Buddha, Buddha's religion or thoughts differently to Joseon Dynasty. So uh, I want to uh, and give an answer answers to you. So I think in Buddha Dynasty, uh, as as you uh, as, as many of them uh, already know, uh, Buddhism is like a national uh, religions at that time. Uh, but at that time, they uh, the Buddha's people uh, believed Buddhism and Taoism and shamanism uh, simultaneously, and they also read the Confucian text. And they uh, at that time they uh, they uh, didn't exist like exclusively like Joseon dynasty. So it was possible at the time. And then, but the role of those religions were different, I think so. So the role of the Confucianism was, uh, was limited uh, in the political uh, situation, the political space. Uh, otherwise the Buddhism and Taoism and shamanism, the religions that the religions were like the norm and the practice of the daily lives of the Buddha's people. So uh, of course, uh, uh, we can observe that the Buddhist influenced the, uh, the politics as well, and then Confucianism influenced the daily lives as well, but, uh, but, but, uh, but there uh, I can observe some tendencies to like the, the, the distinctive role of those uh, regions in Buddha dynasty. So, so that's what I th uh, think about. And then uh, I can say that the antagonism towards Buddhism is was definitely the characteristic of Neo-Confucianism. So in uh, in the in in the Korean Peninsula. So I don't know much of I don't know this situation in China, but uh, but uh, but in the uh, in the Gura Dynasty. Uh, so before their Confucianism was introduced uh, to Gura Dynasty, actually at that time, until that time, uh, the people who learned Confucian, uh, the, not people, the literati, the man literati, who learned Confucian thought, they also believed the Buddhism at the same time. So for them, it is not the, the awkward or it is not the uh, bad thing, but uh, very late, from the very late uh, Joseon Dynasty. So, Joseon Dynasty, uh, so like 
1390, uh, like the two or three years before the establishment month of Joseon Dynasty. From that time, the critic the strong criticism, criticism to towards the Buddhism, uh, were uh, Buddhism, uh, uh, was at the time. So, but uh, but uh, what I want to say is that uh, 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 even that time, uh, the person who insists that the uh, who, person who criticized the Buddhism was very 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 few few person. So. Uh, it, Am I, or did I, did I answer right? I'm, I, I really think the questions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank, uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So please more questions. As I said, you can raise your hand or put question in the Q and A box. And as you are typing, I, I had another question. It's interesting you, you said that even in the, the military period, mm -hmm. It seems that the, the military leaders were versed in, in Confucianism and, and they, mm. they used that in their statecraft. I mean, if we look at the Joseon dynasty, I mean, applicants in the, the military exams, mm -hmm. they would have been tested in, in Confucianism mm. as yeah, well. I mean, are there any indications? Do we know from the Korea period? Was it part of military training or would they have been tested as well in, in Confucianism? Uh... Actually, there uh, was uh, like the military exam examination at once uh, in the 12th mm. century. But after that, it was uh, uh, demolished. So there was there was no like the official way to learn Confucianism for the military uh, military generals or military soldiers. But uh, but uh, through the record, uh, I can also that observe that uh, some military officers from the high classes uh, learned Confucian classics like women, like uh, women I said, so basic uh, classic cl uh, Confucian classics. So they didn't uh, study the like five Confucian five classics, uh, which is very very difficult. Uh, like the other uh, scholars uh, who want to, to pass, the, pass the civil examination, but they learned the very basic Confucian classics at the time. But uh, the, the, of the military soldiers from the lower classes who fight like in the, at the front of the war, they didn't, uh, they didn't learn the Confucian classics. So, so uh, I want to say that uh, in the military uh, period of Goda Dynasty, there uh, there there were uh, a few uh, military dictators, uh, like Yi Yimin or like Yi um, Yibang. So they were from very low class, and they didn't know the characters, or they did, they didn't know that actually they were ignorant. Uh, but they couldn't uh, uh, rule the country uh, for a very very. Uh, uh, for a long time because uh, they tried to uh, suppress the courtiers by the by the strength but it 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 couldn't exist uh, longer so Che Chung Han and Zhang Jingbu is from very high class and actually Che Chung Han uh, uh, was I think Che Chung Han uh, he knew uh, the like the he is he was very good at to uh, see the situation. So uh, as soon as he got the power, uh, what he did uh, was to like suggest the advice for the king, like Choi So and and then uh, he, uh, although the reality is totally different, uh, he uh, he suggested that the position as Confucian scholars. Uh, although he he was the military general, and then he want to advise. Uh, he he uh, chose the way to advise uh, for the king. Although he uh, tried to do whatever whatever he wanted. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, are there any more questions? one typing at the moment okay let's 
Yes. So it's a question from Richard, Richard mm -hmm. King. So, so what drove the adoption of new Confucianism? Uh, was it adopted first and then used to attack people, or was it adopted because it provided a justification to attack people, uh, and was it adapted and utilized for this purpose? So, what what drove then the adoption of, of new Confucianism? Uh, okay. Uh, I think um, at first uh, they adopt uh, the new Confucianism uh, as a new fancy like ideology. So in the Yan period, uh, the kings and some of kings and courtiers, they, uh, they wanted to accept the Yan dynasty systems and institutions and cultures. And because at the time, the China was the, the Yan dynasty was the like the central uh, of the culture. So, uh, so uh, at that time, uh, Yan dynasty's uh, rulers uh, uh, adopted the Neo-Confucianism uh, as the uh, as a statecraft to rule the country because they they couldn't uh, they couldn't consist they couldn't continue uh, the way they uh, the the way they uh, did before. So that's why they uh, adopted the Neo-Confucianism. So at that time, in the like the scholastic uh, scholastic uh, field, the academic field, uh, the many of scholars uh, try to discuss and discuss uh, the Neo Confucianism. So King Chungsan, uh, who was the, the king of the Korea, uh, he was actually eager to uh, eager to adopt the what well, uh, yes systems and culture. So that's how uh, they how they that's how the uh, Korea's intellectuals uh, adopted the, their Confucianism, and then and then uh, and then uh, liter liter uh, literatists uh, of Goda Dynasty uh, should literate literatists uh, of Goda Dynasty. Uh, uh, some of them uh, went to the uh, Yan Dynasty and they tried to pass the civil examination of uh, Yan Dynasty. Then they had to unite the text. So that's how the four books, uh, which is the Neo Confucian Neo book, uh, was uh, selected as the textbook of Goda Dynasty. So that's the drive. And then I think uh, it was uh, adop adopted, Neo Confucianism was adopted as the ideology. And then uh, some of the new Confucian uh, scholars uh, uh, tried to find the, uh, the content of uh, to, to attack the enemy to justify uh, themselves and the other ways. So I think uh, it happened in the very, very political uh, uh, reasons, not like ideological, ideological reasons or not like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Uh, thank you, Richard. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, a question from Salome. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, could you elaborate on East group tactics based on Confucian classics? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, actually, I have lots of interest in that. So, uh, so the East group, uh, they had two tactics based on Confucian classics. Uh, I think so. So uh, based on uh, my uh, my research, so until now, so uh, the one is uh, to make uh, Isonge, the King Tejo, Tejo the first, uh, to become the like to become uh, the chancellor, the Confucian chancellor of the king. So they try to give the name of E in uh, as I said before to the Isonge, uh, Ison to Isonge. So they at first they want to like that they want to uh, praise uh, Isonge as very very wise uh, Confucian scholar and uh, Confucian chancellor and uh, based on the uh, logic uh, e in uh, expel the uh, the king. And then after after uh, the king was uh, king reflected, and then 
uh, and then uh, the EU uh, he even had him return to the country. So they want to that position uh, for Isonge. So at the end of the Guru dynasty, uh, some East group, the Confucian group, told the uh, set uh, told to said to the last king Gong Yangwang that if you are good, then you can return because uh, there is, there is a good chancellor uh, like Yi In uh, that is Yi Songge. But uh, uh, everyone knows it never happened. So it's like just justification. So that's the one way. And the other way, the, uh, and the other way is that uh, what, I, what I said in the uh, presentation. So they wanted to uh, uh, make um, enemies, the uh, political enemies, uh, traitors of the Guru dynasty. So they borrowed uh, the phrase of the traitors or uh, in uh, uh, spring and autumn honors and they criticize based on the phrase. So uh, whenever they uh, they expelled the expelled political groups or the enemies and then uh, when whenever they uh, like like executed the king, actually they executed two kings at the time. So kings they always mentioned the uh, the the phrase of dancing jokta the traitors uh, of the spring and autumn. So that's I think that's the tactics of them, and it worked. I think so. Okay, thank you. Uh, then we have a question from Nicole. So thank you so much for the interesting talk. You briefly mentioned royal lectures. I was wondering, in your opinion, what kind of role did these royal lectures have in shaping the direction of Confucian politics? Oh yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you can remember a brief uh, 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 thing of royal, royal lectures. Actually, I I had uh, that's the uh, I dismissed that, that part of my presentation because it was too long, but it was important and in good time. So in good dynasty. So uh, actually, royal lectures is the meeting with kings and courtiers, uh, which. Uh, so they, the kings and courtiers, read the Confucian text together, and they discuss the politics uh, in the at the royal lectures. That was the uh, what royal lecture is. Uh, so royal lecture was actually held uh, in the 12th centuries uh, at first, but uh, but and the royal lecture was uh, the that institution was from the Song dynasty. So uh, it was not originated from the Gura itself. And, but unlikely Song dynasty, uh, Song dynasty, uh, Gura's kings and courtiers used the uh, royal lecture uh, like other way, not reading, uh, they read, read Confucian classics, of course, but not like, not, uh, not study, uh, deeply Confucian texts were discussed the uh, politics. They just mm, held royal uh, lectures when the natural disasters uh, happened. So uh, when natural disasters, they held royal lectures and they read Confucian texts at the at, uh, at there and they prayed uh, to like the seize the natural disaster. So actually, it's like very similar to the Buddhist rituals. So uh, from the sixth to seventh century in Buddhist rituals, kings uh, often uh, read Buddhist classics uh, when the natural disasters um, happened. So uh, I think the, the kings and courtiers of Guru dynasty, they chose the, the royal lectures uh, to solve the natural disaster like the Buddhistic way, not the Confucian way. So I think uh, actually for them, uh, the royal lectures were not uh, uh, a point, uh, not an uh, important thing to like shape the Confucian politics. It's like just a show or performance to authorize or legitimize the king's uh, king, uh, king, king or courtiers' uh, 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 yeah, power, I, I think so. So may, uh, if I have time, then I will deal about that. The, Thing and I then I can I can like uh, I can show the relationship between the Buddhism and Confucianism in the Guru Guru Dynasty well, I think so. So thank you for your yeah. question. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from uh, Wing Chan. Mm -hmm. 
So it has often been claimed that there were less restrictions imposed on women during the Koryo dynasty, and women could enjoy many privileges such as freedom of movement, easy interaction between men and women, and remarriage, etc. Uh, but I wonder if there were any regulations or law only imposed on women during the Korea dynasty. Uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chan. Uh, uh, please, uh, I will turn the light on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, thank you very much for your question. So, uh, I think. Yeah, they, uh, as you said, the, the woman in Buddha dynasty could remarry and they could inherit uh, some, some, uh, some properties from their, uh, uh, from their uh, fathers or mothers. And then uh, ac actually they could, uh, after marriage, the men uh, moved to woman's house and they lived together. And then after they gave birth, uh, they will uh, they will move in their own own house. So after ten years to 12, 12, 10, 20 years to of the marriage, uh, the son-in-law will live together will live uh, with his wife and his like mother-in-law and father-in-law together. So it's very different. Uh, and then uh, and there were uh, but however. Uh, there were uh, regulations or laws only imposed on women during Goryeo dynasty, because uh, in uh, law codes, uh, Goryeo actually I think uh, the many studies uh, said that uh, there were not like the code law of Goryeo's Goryeo's own code law like Joseon's or Gyeongbokdaejeon or something, so they borrowed uh, the uh, law code from the Chinese uh, dynasty. So at first it was um, Tang's law, and then uh, in the middle of the century it was the Song's law, and then uh, in the at the end in the uh, late Goryeo dynasty it was the Yan's law, and then they used some like cases together. So they they uh, when they uh, have some law. Uh, they have to they have to deal with the law things. Uh, they use both of the system. The one is the code law, and then the other is the case, the actual cases in Goryeo dynasty. But uh, 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 I think I think uh, many people know. But in in the code law of the China, uh, there are some regulations of law where laws uh, for the women. Uh, so like uh or some like. Uh, some regulations about the divorce or something, but uh, in Korea, I think although the law was existed, existed, but uh, the the reality was different. I think so. So, uh, because they can remarry or, or something, and they can divorce or some divorce. So, uh, I'm I'm actually I'm not expert about the law or like the woman's status, but uh, I think, uh, I think there were. Regulations about um, about the uh, about uh, almost about the marriage, but the but the it well, the ex the reality was different. So yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry that uh, I'm not the expert about that. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, I think it might come down to. I mean, they, they seem to have been quite selective in the Korea dynasty, just using. Chinese law codes as, as reference works, mm -hmm. uh, not, not really binding uh, mm -hmm. in that sense. Uh, okay, I think that was the last question. So uh, thank you so much, so gently, very interesting. <laughs> uh, a lot of question, I guess you're, you're feeling tired now. I'm okay, I'm very, uh, I'm so happy that uh, I, uh, I received a lot of questions. Yes. And, uh, very informative and very informative answers. And uh, thank you all for coming and, and listening to this talk. And I hope you all have a good Friday evening. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye. Bye Goodbye. bye. Thank you.